Hi everyone, so in this video we're looking at the base properties of amines. And we have just one aim for this video, so to be able to explain the difference in base strength between ammonia and different amines. So before we start, we really need to understand what a base is. There are two different definitions for a base. There is the Lewis base and the bronsted lowry base. Now a Lewis base, we can say, donates a pair of electrons, whereas a bronsted lowry base accepts a proton. And the nitrogen in an amine is accepting a proton with its lone pair. Now if we just think about ammonia for a second, what will happen is the ammonia will form an ammonium ion by accepting the H plus and forming NH4 plus. Now the plus is on the nitrogen. So if we can make that positive ch positively charged nitrogen more stable, that will mean that we have uh, a stronger base. So the more stable the positively charged nitrogen is, the stronger the base will be. So we've got to think about what will make that positive charge more stable. And we've come across that before in Chem 2 when we have looked at carbocations. If you remember um, at the addition uh, mechanism, we have a positively charged carbocation eventually. And if you remember, the more alkyl groups there are around that carbocation, the more stable it is because the alkyl groups have a positive inductive effect. And what happens is they push electrons through their covalent bonds onto this positively charged carbon, making it more stable. And so if we, if we use that idea with, um, with amines, we can say that an ammonium ion with just four H's around it will be less stable than a primary amine that has accepted a proton because it has a CH3 group on it, an alkyl group on it, which is, is having a positive inductive effect and pushing electrons onto that nitrogen. Similarly, a secondary amine that has accepted a hydrogen, so a nitrogen with two alkyl groups on it, will be more stable again, because again it has more positive inductive effect from those, um, from those methyl groups or alkyl groups. However, a, a, a tertiary amine that has accepted a proton is not more stable than a secondary amine. Even though you may think, oh, it's got an extra methyl group and therefore it's got more positive inductive effect, the reason why it's not stable is because it's insoluble in water. So a tertiary amine, so if I just uh, delete these, So the secondary amine is more stable than a tertiary amine that has accepted a proton, so something with maybe three CH3s around it, because this is not soluble in water, which is where it would be accepting that proton. The other thing we have to think about is, um, is a phenyl amine. So if we think about phenyl amines, which is an amine with a benzene ring on it, So we've got two H's and we've got a benzene ring and we've got another H on it to make it positively charged. This is the least stable amine because what happens is this lone pair becomes embroiled in this benzene ring. So if we look at it side on, this benzene ring overlaps with the lone, with the lone pair in the p orbital. And so that lone pair becomes part of that benzene ring, if you like. Not, not fully, but you can think of it like that. And so, um, and so basically that lone pair is not as um, willing to give its electrons, uh, to give itself to that hydrogen that it would be accepting. And so that becomes less stable than the ammonia because that lone pair isn't really available to be donated to that hydrogen or to, to be accepted by that hydrogen. So if we recap, we can say that um, an ethyl amine or, or an, al uh, uh, yeah, an ethyl, sorry, an alkyl amine is more stable than ammonia, which is more stable than phenyl amine, that is an amine with uh, a benzene ring on it. And then this has other other uh, considerations to be made. So um, a primary 
uh, amine that's accepted a proton is more stable than ammonia. A secondary amine that's accepted a proton is more stable than a primary one. But a tertiary amine becomes less stable than a secondary one because it's not very soluble in water. So if you look at a past exam question on this, um, and to be honest, this is the only past exam question I could find on this topic, and so, in the new syllabus anyway, so it becomes increasingly more likely that they'll ask you a question on this, because the examiners have to examine everything on the spec um, every three years. Now, this is from the June 2011 paper, so I suppose they may not ask it because that is within three years, but the, the longer that they leave it, the more likely it becomes. So they're asking you why amine U is a weaker base than amine W. So if we look a bit more closely at amine U and W, you can see that amine U is a phenyl amine. It's got a benzene ring um, attached to amine. And amine W is a, um, is a primary amine. Okay, now we've already established that a phenyl amine is the weakest base. And a primary amine is a pretty strong base because of the positive inductive effect that will be coming from this from this um, alkyl group. But what we really want to think about is what they want to see in the MART scheme in an exam. So if I just zoom back out again and think about what they'll want you to write. Now if they're asking about a phenyl amine, which they are here, they'll want you to focus on why this is a weaker base than W. And if they're asking you to compare um, alkyl amines, they'll want you to explain why they are stronger than e why they're a stronger base than each other. So if we were focusing on the alkyl amine, we'd be talking about the positive inductive effect coming from the alkyl groups around the nitrogen making it more stable. But because we've got a phenyl amine, they want you to focus on that. So if you've if you're explaining why um, two amines are have different are different strength bases and one of them is a phenyl amine, then you've got to focus on why the phenyl amine is weaker than the others. If you've got two alkyl amines, then you've got to explain why one is stronger than the other by explaining about the positive inductive effect, um, making the positively charged nitrogen uh, more stable because it's pushing electrons onto the nitrogen. So, how do you answer a question where phenylamine is your uh, is your focus? So first, you've got to mention the lone pair. So if you just if so, first point the lone pair on the nitrogen. You've got to say that it's on the nitrogen. If you just say the lone pair, then they may think you mean it's on the carbon or the hydrogen. So make sure you're very specific in your answers. And that's really the same all the way through the paper. Make sure you're specific on where the lone pairs are and things like that. Don't let the examiner assume it, that you know anything. You've got to make you've got to make everything clear. So lone pair on the nitrogen um, is delocalized um, into the benzene ring in U. So make sure you're saying that this is all part of U, not W. Now, if you said it was delocalized into the benzene ring, then I think they would assume that you did, uh, that you were referring to W, uh, to, sorry, to U. They were referring to U. But um, as I said before, make sure you, you explain everything. So the lone pair on N, that's your first mark, is delocalized into the benzene ring in U. That's your second mark. And therefore it's less available um, to accept protons. Okay, so there's your three points for your three marks. Lone pair on N, first mark, delocalized into the benzene ring in U. It's, it's, it's not available because it's delocalized, it's, it's overlapping with this benzene ring. Um, we say it's delocalized, or you can say it's spread into the ring, and then it's less available to accept protons. So because it's delocalized in this ring, it won't um, accept a proton instead. It, it's more stable by being part of this ring than accepting a proton. So those are your three points that you, that you make to answer this question. I hope that helps. Please email me if you need any more help on this.